Hi and welcome to the most important section of this course, the frequently asked questions. So in this section, I will walk you through 30 questions that continue to appear in the real PFMP exam. So for the PFMP exam preparation purposes and in order to pass the exam from the first trial, this section is very important. Actually, I wrote the concepts of those questions few hours after I finished my PFMP exam and then I designed this course few weeks so the 30 questions you will see in this section will definitely appear in your PFMP exam I divided the 30 questions into three sets starting with set number one through the portfolio life cycle the risk manager provided you with a below table as a result of the probability impact analysis of the identified risks after discussions, a decision was made not to address any risk unless the risk score is higher than 0.2. Based on this information, which risk should be addressed? So in my exam, two questions were very similar to this example, only the numbers are different. So in this situation, we have a table containing two threats and two opportunities. The risk manager with the portfolio manager decided that they will not address any risk that has a risk score less than 0.2 so which of the following risks should be addressed this is a very simple math question you just need to determine the risk score for each risk by multiplying the probability by the impact and check which of the four risks has a risk score higher than 0.2 threat one risk score will be 0 0.015 as a result of multiplying 0.15 by 0.1 Threat 2 risk score will be 0 0.18, so both has a risk score less than 0.2, so they will not be addressed. Opportunity 1 risk score will be 0.2 exactly, also it will not be addressed, while for opportunity 2 the risk score will be 0.8 multiplied by 0.3, which will give you 0.24. So this is the only risk out of the 4 with a risk score higher than 0.2. So the risk with the highest risk score should be the team biggest concern and as per the portfolio manager criteria the score is more than 0 0.2 so the right answer for this question is opportunity number 2. In your PFMP exam you expect two questions about the risk score concept with different requirements. I will show you another example later on in this section but one of those two questions will be very close to this example. Question number 2. Managing risk is key to the success of any initiative. Risk is considered to be inherent in any activity we do in project management and at any level. As part of managing risks, the portfolio manager applies multiple analysis and uses tools to help dealing with risks. What does the project manager use to visualize risks impact on portfolio strategic objectives such as profitability? So this question is about managing portfolio risks and planning for portfolio risk management. It's asking about one of the tools and techniques we usually use, a technique that will visualize the impact of all risks on a specific portfolio strategic objective like the profitability in order to determine which risk have the highest impact. So a visual representation, it's not the risk breakdown structure. The risk breakdown structure will just list in a hierarchical fashion the risk categories of the portfolio, it is the sensitivity analysis with the tornado diagram resulting from conducting this technique. Of course, it's not the efficient frontier, it's used in the performance management and it is not the PI matrix. So the right option for this question is sensitivity analysis. The, out, the resulting diagram from conducting this technique will be the tornado diagram and it is a tool used to visualize risks impact on portfolio strategic objectives like the budget or the schedule or the profitability and you can refer to the standard for portfolio management page 132. Expect one question in the exam about the tornado diagram and the sensitivity, sensitivity analysis. Now these steps are not guesses, those uh, tips represent what I had in my PFMP exam. Question number three Consider you are a portfolio manager and that you are managing the most important portfolio in your organization. What are the processes you execute as part of the portfolio governance? So this is a simple yet tricky question. And it 
continue to appear in the PFMP exam and I had this question. Now, the question is asking about the processes the portfolio manager execute as part of the portfolio governance. Now, the, the tricky part of this question is that looking at the options, define portfolio and optimize for, for portfolio are both part of the portfolio governance management. Portfolio performance management is not part, so option is not part of the governance, so option B will be ignored. Portfolio management plan and portfolio strategic plan. The portfolio strategic plan also is not part of the portfolio governance, so option C will be ignored as well. However, for option D, define portfolio and authorize portfolio. Both are part of the portfolio governance. So which option should you select, A or D? Actually, the trick in this question is the wording. The question is asking what are the processes you execute as a portfolio manager for the authorized portfolio uh, process if you refer back to the lecture of this process you will find that the majority of the activities conducted as part of this process are performed by the governance board and not by the portfolio manager so the right option for this question is option a, the governance processes executed by the portfolio manager are the defined portfolio and optimized portfolio. You will have the same question exactly in your real PFMP exam. Question number four, you are managing a complex portfolio with high risk levels due to emerging technological breakthroughs and a short benefit window to market your product. You know that managing risk is key to success and you are coaching your team on the same. You have just finalized the development of the risk management plan. What do you normally expect to find in a portfolio risk management plan? So you will have a lot of such questions like it's a long story, three or four uh, sentences, long paragraph. But actually the, the real question will be in the last sentence of the question. The question here is simply, what do you normally expect to find in a portfolio risk management plan? You need to memorize the sections of the portfolio risk management plan, the portfolio performance and communication management plans as well. Now, out of the listed options, the key section listed is the roles and responsibilities for risk management. This is part of the portfolio risk management plan. Now, what are the key sections of this plan, starting with the methodology? which defines the approach, tools, and data sources, roles and responsibilities, who will do what. The risk measures as well will be part of this plan, the frequency of conducting risk management activities, the risk categories as well will be another section. So these are the key sections of a proper portfolio risk management plan. You will have the same question in the real PFMP exam. Question number five. You have scored the portfolio components and you are analyzing the data in order to prioritize the components using the following scoring table. Which of the options represents the correct components priority? Similar to this example, you will have three or four questions that will require you to do simple math calculations to find out the right components priority. So in this question, it's about the weighted ranking and scoring techniques we use in authorizing and defining our portfolio. We have five components from A to E. We have three criteria, which we are assessing the components based on the growth, additional revenue, and risk reduction. The value of each criteria with the weight of this uh, criteria is given for each component, okay? So simply, we will multiply the value by the weight for each criteria for the same component. Do the sum, okay? And the component with the highest score will be the highest priority component. You will have the same question in the exam with different values. Now, I added a column at the end of each criteria just to multiply the value by the weight for each component. So for component A growth, it's 2,500. For component A, additional revenue, it's 750. And for component A, risk reduction, it's 6,750. So the total is 10,000 and so on. You will do the same for the five components. Then you will do the total. You will have the total. The one with the highest score is component D. So this is the one with the highest priority. Then we will have component B. Then we will have component E. 
then component C, then component A. So the right prioritization of those five components using this scoring technique will be D, B, E, C, A. This question is very important for the PFMP exam. Question number six. When managed correctly, the balanced scorecards can change the way an organization does business. Balanced scorecards keep focus on results. In this context, which of the following are factors that can be targeted by the balanced scorecards? Now, balanced scorecards are used heavily in strategic management in organizations and in performance review and performance measures. It's not covered in detail in the standard for portfolio management. However, you should expect one or two questions in the exam, and one of them will be very close to this example. What are the factors that cannot be targeted by the balanced scorecards? By looking at the options, you need to know that the rewards, okay, and the market value and the supplier value, those three parameters cannot be measured or targeted by balanced scorecards. So the only option that does not include the reward or the market value or the supplier value is option D. So balanced scorecards can, can target the product manufacturing, core competencies, response times, maintenance costs, and shareholder value. Two questions in the PFMP exam. I had two questions in my PFMP exam about the balanced score card. Question number seven, consider you have the following efficient frontier graph with multiple portfolios in it. Which portfolio should you choose? Also, you should expect one or two questions very close to this example showing a graph of the portfolio efficient frontier with more than uh, three or four portfolios and asking about the best portfolio to select when there is no information given about the risk tolerance of the organization always select the portfolio that is located on the curve exactly so in our example we have portfolios c d e a and b and the only portfolio that is located on the curve is portfolio d when it comes to portfolio efficient frontier the portfolios lying on the curve are the best portfolio under the curve are suboptimal and portfolio above the curve are too risky so if the for example if another question informed you that the organization is a risk averse organization it's better to go along the curve and to the left so it should be on the curve but you will go to the left side for risk tolerant organizations you can go along the curve and to the right based on the risk threshold of the organization two questions in the exam about the portfolio efficient frontier Question number eight, chartering the portfolio is an important step towards the initiation of the endeavor. It authorizes the portfolio managers to use the resources and marks the first step towards the allocation of resources to the components upon their initiation. In this context, which of the below can help you while developing the charter? So it's a long story question. While it is exactly asking about the tools and techniques for the develop portfolio charter process, this is why the tools and techniques, the inputs and the outputs of the 16 processes are very, very important for the PFMP exam and you should expect a lot of questions about them. The tools and techniques of the developed portfolio charter process are the scenario analysis and the capability and capacity analysis. I had the same question in my PFMP exam asking about the tools and techniques of the developed portfolio charter process. And another question was about the portfolio roadmap development tools and techniques. Question number nine, which of the options is considered part of the enterprise environmental factors? Again, I had the same question in my PFMP exam asking about the enterprise environmental factors. So which of the following is part of those factors? Fluctuating market rates of raw material, high turnover, organizational changes, changes and risk management, bankruptcy or project demand the only enterprise environmental factor which is external to the organization is the fluctuating market rates of the raw material you know that enterprise environmental factors are internal or external and they are not under the control of the portfolio manager or the organization and they will definitely influence the success of your portfolio you will have the same question in your real PFMP exam. Question number 10. While managing a program for banking sector spanning, spanning multiple transformational areas, 
a new portfolio manager comes to you seeking advice on the usefulness of the return on investment ROI, you tell her that ROI is the best method to measure returns of. So again, this question is not covered in the standard, but it is expected to be in your PFMP exam. We covered actually the return on investment and the internal rate of return, net present value, and all these financial matrix. But for what duration and for what risk, we did not mention that earlier, but you need to understand this concept. It's a rule of thumb for the return on investment and the internal rate of return. For the return of investment, it is used for investments with short duration and low risk. This is the rule of thumb of using the return of an investment financial matrix. So for our options, it's option D. Now, if the question was about the internal rate of return, so it is used for investments with long duration and low risk. So it is a rule of thumb, which you need to know for the PFMP exam. You will have the same question in the real PFMP exam. I don't remember if it was about the return of investment or the internal rate of return.